Today we're gonna to talk about week three notes and I'm gonna to touch my mask as much as I possibly can. And in the I'll be three notes, I gave you a um, in the assignment, aside from this video, you will also see a Word document that you can use. And it'll basically tell you all the different things we're gonna talk about. Let's take a look at that document real quick. We're gonna talk about HTML, HTML tags, HTML tag attributes, um, doc type declaration, what that is what the actual HTML tag does, not just all HTML tags. That's the difference between this thing here. Here we're talking about all HTML tags. Here we're talk, talking about just the HTML tag. All right, what the head tag does is, uh, what the body tag does, not the one you put on a body, but the one like in your HTML document. And what CSS is, how many times can I touch my mask? Uh, what CSS selectors are, what's the difference between an ID, a class, and a tag? Uh, inline styling, internal styling, external styling, different rules to follow, and a couple of different websites you can use to, to get some helpful, <laughs> helpful hints on things you can do with your websites. So that's, what's, that's what we're going to cover today. Again, when you're doing your, uh, your notes, I don't want you to just copy down what you see on the screen and put it in, inside each of these, uh, these boxes here. What I, the preferred way to do it is you listen to what I say, you read stuff on the screen, you internalize that, it goes through some kind of thought process, hmm, do I understand this? Hopefully, if not, you know, you kind of like think about it and you put it down information as best as you understand it. So I want it in your own words. If I just put in word for word what I say or what you see on the screen, it's not really going to help you all that much. It's just going to go in and then, out, and then you're not going to remember it. Whereas if you think about it and you, then you put it down, then it hopefully it can you can be internalized some way. The best, of course, the best way to, to, to remember all these things that I'm talking about is to when you're actually doing this stuff, it will actually uh, uh, actually do it, and then you'll the more times you do these things, the more all these things will make sense. All right, let's move on. Let's go uh, look at let's do their presentation. Hopefully, oh, I did this last time. I want there. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, IST 263, this is the stuff we're covering on October 5th, 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Staple this onto my face. It's driving me crazy. All right. Uh, what is HTML? HTML is a hypertext markup language, and a hypertext is just text with links in it, and a markup language is uh, any language that has a language with like tags in it. Like, uh, the two most popular uh, markup languages are HTML and XML, and uh, we're only going to be dealing with HTML, but uh, I want to talk briefly about some of the other things. Uh, all right, so. So tags, of course, are like what, what's a headline, what's a paragraph, what's an image, all those kind of things. Those are all different tags we have to worry about. Um, so uh, HTML is made up of its own tags, and all websites are made of HTML tags and elements. Again, there are different versions of HTML, and the most recent version is HTML5, and that's the one we're going to worry about. HTML has two jobs, the one to create the structure and the layout of the website, so like where is your nav bar, is it on the top of the screen, is it on the bottom, is it on the side, all right? Where are your images, what is your text? Uh, uh, and then the second part of it, which I was just gonna uh, go to, is the, the content for your site, all right? So uh, what, what's the actual words that you want to be on your, on your website? Where, uh, what are the images that you want? What are the videos that you want to play? All that kind of good stuff. So again, structure, and content. Those are the two things that HTML is worried about. And this is how an HTML tag, this is all HTML tags, I'm not talking about just the HTML tag. This is how, this is their, their structure. And it starts off with a tag name, has an attribute, and inside that attribute has a value. So this is our opening uh, uh, tag. So it starts off with our angle brackets, I like to call them carrots. Starts off with our carrots over here, with your opening tag, some attribute. It could be something like you know the width, or like if we talked about for their a tags. A tags are the only tags that we've dealt with so far that have an attribute. The attribute that we've dealt with is the href, the hypertext reference. 
and then the value. And the value that usually that uh, you have with your with your href is uh, a URL. So where are what's the attribute for the a tag that we've done so far? Is the href? What is the value? Whatever the um, the the URL is that we're linking to. And then after, then you have some kind of content between you sometimes, most of the time, and then you've got your closing tag. So if I have uh, H1, you should have a closing H1. And we uh, differentiate the two with the uh, slash at the end. So we've got our start tag and our end tag. Inside our, again, the attributes and the values always go in the start tag. They will never go in the end tag. So if you, for some reason you have an attribute in your end tag, it's done incorrectly. <clears throat> So attributes are there to provide additional information about uh, an element, like a character trait, all right? So, you know, Mr. Dave has blue eyes, wonderful blue eyes, right? That would, my, one of my attributes would be blue eyes, or attribute could be like eyes, and the value of my eyes is blue, or beautiful, or <laughs> whatever you want, I'm talking up my eyes, right? Whatever, so the attribute would be eyes, or, you know, hair for a person, and the value is whatever, you know, the, like, you know, it would be height would be, you know, five foot 11 or whatever it is, you know, weight. Uh, I'll, I'll be generous and say, you know, 175 pounds. And then we're, uh, so that's the, uh, that's how you think about attributes and values, all right? So again, they're always in the start, start tag, never in the end tag. So. Uh, the first uh, tag we're going to talk about is the doc type tag. So every website starts off with doc type, well, doc type, and then usually HTML. You know, 99 times out of 100 is going to be HTML. Well, maybe not that percentage, but you get the idea. So the doc type HTML tag just tells the browser what version of HTML that we that we that we that we use to create this website. And it could be something besides HTML. It could be like a XML or XHTML, which are just different uh, markup languages, right? So, uh, so the HTML by default is HTML5. So if I just type in doc type HTML, the browser assumes we're using HTML5. And HTML5 is going to have certain features in, in it that HTML4 or 4.01 might not have. And different browsers can use different features for whatever reason. So different browsers, based off the way that they're coded, they might not be able to use every feature that HTML5 has. So when you're designing your websites, you have to think about, and we're going to be writing in HTML5, when you're designing your websites, you have to think about if this feature doesn't work in uh, Internet Explorer and you know that your uh, website is going to be used by a certain amount of people that are using Internet Explorer, you might not want to use that feature. Or you might want to code your website in a way that if they, if they are using Internet Explorer, it doesn't mess up their website. Or it doesn't mess up their viewing experience. The next tag we have to worry about is the HTML tag. So HTML tag is just says this is the start of our HTML code. So again, the first one is always going to be doc type and then usually HTML. Everyone that we're going to make this semester will be doc type HTML. We're never going to make an HTML or an XA, or an XML or an XHTML website in this class. So then we've got our HTML tag. We've got our opening tag and our closing tag. And everything, every tag in, should go in between those two tags. So our head tag, our body tag, all those things, and go inside the, the HTML tags. It's a container for all of your code, all of your HTML anyways. Then we've got our head tags, right? So this is like the place where we're going to set up our website. You can set up like the title we've talked about. You're going to connect to your CSS, your JavaScript, uh, some metadata, all that kind of stuff. So it's not going to be stuff that actually shows up on the, on the actual web page, but it's going to be stuff that helps getting uh, your web page set up so that it's viewed correctly. Underneath the head, just like here's my head, right, and then down here's my body. Uh, so that's the way your head should be first, body underneath that. 
Underneath the head, you go put your body. So this is the stuff where all your content goes, all your headli uh, headlines, your paragraphs, your images, your videos, your nav bars, all that kind of stuff is going to go inside the body. I'll put this over here so it gets around so much. We've got uh, cascading style sheets, CSS. So CSS is a way to style all of our different tags or different elements of our website. And the reason why we're going to do it in the CSS is so, it, generally speaking, the designers, web developers, they want to keep your style and your content separate. So when that way, when you make changes to the style, you don't have to go through all the different pieces of your content and change everything there. You can just change one thing here in your CSS sheet and then that will change everything on your website if you've done everything correctly, depending on how you want to do it. So again, you can do multiple page layouts in one file. You can change, there's different, we'll talk about all this stuff, but we'll talk about, um, you can do different, uh, you have different things, IDs, classes, you can control all tags. So if you want all of your headlines or all of your paragraphs or all of your images or whatever it is you're talking about to be styled a certain way or even most or some, Right, rather than do it on each individual thing inside your code, inside your HTML, you can do it inside your CSS just once and then apply it to a bunch of different places. There are three ways we can apply our CSS, inline, internal, and external. And uh, most times we're going to want to do it externally. We're going to want to link to an external stash. That's just the, the preferred method. This is what our CSS looks like. We've dealt with this a little bit, but a CSS has a selector. Like what is it that we're changing? Right? And then how are we changing? What is the property that we're changing? And then how, what is the value of that, of that property is it gonna be? So for example, if we wanted all of our A tags to be uh, a certain color or to not have underlines or to, uh, to when, uh, when we click on it to, the link instead of being that purple color, it could be on some other color or whatever it is you want. And so it goes with the curly braces. We've got whatever the property is, then a colon, and then the value, and then a semicolon. And then the closing curly brace. Now, just as an aside, right? If you're change, if you're doing CSS and you're only really changing like one thing, you can do it all on one line like this. But if you're changing like more than one thing, generally speaking, you're gonna to wanna to do your CSS in this style over here, where you have your curly brace, your different uh, properties and values on, on individual lines, and then your closing curly brace at the end over here. So when we're doing our, the three different types of CSS selectors, there is an ID, which you use only once. There are class names, and there, which you can use multiple times. And then there's the tag, right? So if you want to style, like say there's one H1 on your web page that you want to style a certain way, you could give it an ID. And we know it's an ID because it starts off with the hashtag over here, the pound sign. If you want to use, say there's like a few different, I don't know, paragraphs that you want to style a certain way, you could give it a class name. And we know it's a class because it starts with a dot. You also look at the naming convention over here. We see where class names, where the N is capitalized. That's one way to style your, uh, your class names. And then if you want to say you want to uh, style all of your headlines a certain way, all of your H1s, this is the way you would do it. H1 and then your curly braces and whatever properties and values you want them to have. Just going to lock it in. Lock it in. It's going gonna, it's gonna to move in five seconds, but what can I do? All right, so let's go into a little more detail. All right, inline styling is done this way. So you see here on line 11, if I want to style just this one pa uh, paragraph where the text decoration is underlined, so this, where the words, this is a paragraph on your website, it would show up with a line under the words, this is a paragraph, and the spaces too. So it is written in uh, inline, so inside the paragraph, inside the opening paragraph tag, you can do it this way with the style equals, and then however you want to style it. This is essentially the same way as, this is essentially CSS inside the tag. 
That's inline styling. You do it inside the tag, it's like this. You don't use curly braces or anything like that, but you use the style attribute and give it a prop, give it a, a property value of this, right? Text decoration underline, or whatever it is you're doing. You would do this like I mean, a case by case, but like sometimes if you're like if you're not using a CSS file and you just want to style out one thing a certain way, you could do it like this. Internal styling is where you do your CSS. You see here, like here on line three is our head, right? Line 21 is our closing head tag. Inside our head, you could put a style tag and a closing style tag. And inside, between those style tags, opening and closing, you can put in your CSS if you want. Generally speaking, you don't want to, <coughs> excuse me, you don't want to do it this way very often. This is like a, a, a very small use case where maybe you've got one uh, page on your website. You want to style a cur some couple of certain things a certain way on that page, and you don't want to mess, uh, make up a whole new CSS file for it. Generally, usually, you want to use a separate CSS file for all of your CSS styling. Now, external styling is the way we're going to do it the vast majority of the time. There will be a couple of times where I have you mess around with internal and inline styling just so you see what it does, all right? But most times we're going to be using external styling. And the way you do that is like on line six where uh, we, we make basically a link tag inside the head. It doesn't have to be necessarily on line six, but in this case it's on line six. You give it a, it's a relationship of style sheet, what type is it, text slash CSS, uh, hypertext reference to uh, wherever you're keeping your CSS. In this case, this person, when they made up their website, they put it in a CSS folder and they put it in slash custom.css. That's custom.css was the name of their CSS file. Now, we, when we do this in Edity, it's done like a lot of the stuff is done automatically for you. I think it's called like style.css. And you, it doesn't do put it in a separate CSS folder, it's all in one big folder. The HTML and CSS, all that good stuff. All right. So this would style, this would link to a separate style sheet located uh, inside the same folder or wherever it is. And that will link to all the different ways we want to style our, our uh, website. Like if we, let's go to the previous one with the in, internal styling uh, example. Here we have an ID of intro. And we look on line 25, this H1 has an ID of intro. Well, remember, IDs are only used once, so if you wouldn't want to use an ID of intro here and then on line 26, use an ID of intro there as well. Again, I, classes, I mean, IDs should only be used once. So this one over here would be text decoration of underline. So this H1 would have, would be underlined over here. And the hello world would be underlined. Here, the P tag, right? So all of our paragraphs will have the font size of 14 and the color will be this red color over here. So all of our paragraphs will be red. This class name over here, dot, you know, what's a class because it starts with a, uh, the period, right? Dot blue. Uh, anything with a class name of dot blue, the color, instead of uh, black or red or whatever it is, will be this blue color, 0000, zero, zero, zero FF. So if we look inside of our, our uh, body, line 27 and line 29, they both have a class of blue. So this would be red, right, because the default paragraph is red. This would be blue because we changed the, the blue class on this one. This one would be red, and this one would be blue. So again, classes you can use multiple times. Uh, tags will affect all the tags, unless like, so you use a separate class or ID on it. And IDs only get used once. Here are some rules to follow for your code and make it readable. Right? <clears throat> Every tag needs a start tag and an end tag. There are exceptions to this, like image tags don't have closing tags, and there are some other tags, but most tags have opening tags and closing tags. And you'll see when you do your code, a lot of times it'll give you like an error message if you don't close your tag. Tab out your tags, so indent your tags. So when we're uh, making your HTML, look at the example over here. So we need to know what is the, the, the parent and what is the child. So here the HTML tag, of course, is going to be the parent of everything, aside from the doc type tag. Then our head tag and our body tags, they're like uh, siblings, I guess you can think of it that way. 
And then the title tag and the link tag, right? They are children of the head tags. The H1, the paragraphs, these are all children of the body tag, of course. And we know this by looking at it that because these things are indented, these things are tabbed out. So if something is a child of something of another tag, you know, it's inside of another tag, then you should indent, you should tab it over, indent it so that it's that it, um, it's just by looking at it, we can tell what's inside of what. And the computer doesn't care, but we as people care. To make it easier for us to figure out where mistakes might be or you know what's a child, what's a parent, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, stick to the same naming convention. There are different ways to uh, to like do your classes and that kind of stuff. Uh, I shouldn't don't use um, a, for like a class and an ID you should always be start off with a lowercase letter. Don't use spaces or underscores. You can use dashes, but don't use a space or an underscore. I generally like to do the article like a like here we have article the headline, article paragraph, article author, article date. These are different classes you could come up with. Where the first letter, of course, is always going to be lowercase. But then, if I have, uh, like, a, I'm start, I'm like, I'm dealing with articles here, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a blogger, so I'm writing different articles, and I want to style all my autograph headlines a certain way, all my art article paragraphs a certain way. Those are all going to be done like this, right? Where the first case, of course, I mean, the first letter is lowercase. If it's more than one word. Right? They, the, all the other words are uppercase. Starting only the, the first letter of every word is uppercase. So that way, just looking at it, it's easy to see where stuff is. Right? What's the article headline? Kind of says article paragraph, article. So we can kind of like tune out the first part of it and let's look for the second part. Or, like I said, you can do it with dashes if, that, if you're more comfortable with that. Whatever you like, but don't switch between different methods of naming it. But again, always start off with a lowercase letter for your IDs and your classes. And don't use spaces or underscores. Again, you can't use dashes, but other than that, just stick to the same uh, convention throughout your, uh, basically throughout the, all your web design. So once you come up with a certain style, usually these are the two styles we're talking about, just stick with it for all your coding. Only use internal and uh, inline styling if using an external style sheet is not the best option. And in most cases, using an external style sheet will be the best option. Here are a couple of different websites that we can use. Uh, W3Schools. Again, W3, W3C is currently headed by Tim Berners-Lee, the guy who invented the internet. So they have a lot of great tools that you can find on W3Schools, like what different tags mean, what are different web-friendly web -friendly fonts, how to make a nav bar. Um, what is uh, X -H X HTML or uh, what is PHP? All these kinds of different things you can find out about uh, web development. Can I use .com? We'll tell you if certain things, certain uh, CSS properties will work on uh, different browsers or not. So if you want to find out if this cool CSS property that you just found out about will work on your grandma's Internet Explorer, you know, 3.11 <laughs> or something like that, then this is where you, uh, the website you could go to find out if it will actually, actually will show up on her browser or not. And of course, always Google, feel free to Google things up. That's probably the, that, I mean, that's what, that's what professionals will do is, I don't know how to do this, well, let's go to Google. <laughs> and then they'll find out someone who does know how to do it. So, I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to do that during a test, but during a, uh, you know, when you're trying to figure out, oh, it's, Stealing ideas is from an, from other developers. You don't want to steal, all right? But you can be inspired by you know taking code and then modifying it so that it fits whatever it is you want to do. But if you just take someone else's work and then take credit for it, that's of course plagiarism. But if you take their work and you give them credit for it and then you modify it to you, to your purposes, that's perfectly fine. That's done uh, all day long. Uh, every, web, every web developer does it. There's no reason to redo something if someone else has already done it ahead of you and they've done it well. Ah, all right. Well, I test my mask for the hundredth time. There we go. All right, so that's all the notes that we have for today. Uh, I don't want to say all the notes. It's still a lot, but <laughs> that's all that we have for today. But we're going to go ahead. This is um, a, a quick way to find all the information that we need for, for week three notes.
And the nice thing about this is you can go ahead and pause this and do all that good stuff. But remember, I want you to do, when you do your notes, all right, don't just write down what you see on the screen here word for word. I want you to think about it, all right, put it into your own words and then put it into your notes. That means a lot more to me than just seeing that you can copy and paste stuff. <laughs> all right. I will see you guys soon.